Yeah, what up, everybody? It's your man Defect in this motherfucker. Yeah, and welcome back to another exciting episode of Wicked 101. I'm your host, Defect. We're about to get live with some more Wicked 101 uh, flavor and knowledge. You know how we do. If you haven't watched the show before, let me kick it down for you. Wicked 101 is all about the history of the underground, the history of the wicked shit, the history of hip-hop, the history of everything. Not just Magic Ninja. Magic Ninja's a part of it, though. But uh, also underground cats like uh, tonight's guest. If you've been in the underground for any length of time, you, you had to have seen his name, at the very least, if you're not hip to his music. You know, uh, he's been around for a long time, man. A long, long time. Probably as long as I've been around, maybe even longer. Fuck. Why the fuck? I don't know. I don't know. We've, we've all been in it for so long. It's, it's, it's just it's just mind-boggling. You know, 20 fucking years in the game, you know? I, I don't know. But look, man, Mars. If you ain't hip to Mars, he's got a lot popping off this year, man. Um talking over this fucking beat um he's got all kinds of singles that dropped this year you know he's got the fucking eps dropping with people he's got collab we're gonna we're gonna talk about all that you know but i just want to let you guys know in case you haven't seen the show it's all about the history of the wicked shit it's all about the history of horrorcore and uh mars is no exception man he's been around for so long mars are you with me i am with you Oh, shit. Everybody give it up for Mars in the chat, man. Come on. Mars, you got What's good? What's good? You got you to gotta turn your, your phone sideways, bro. Like this? Uh, well, now you're upside down. <laughs> now you're upside down. Uh, like this? Uh, like landscape mode or some shit. It, it is like that. Really? Yeah. Well, you're, you're sideways and you're, uh, you're, you're, like not, this? you're not full screen. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what's going on, but it's it's weirding me out. I don't know. I don't know how to work this shit. Oh, like this? I mean, that's sideways. That that doesn't work. Well, you just had it. You're at least straight up. But okay, that's that's better. At least at least you're uh up and down, right side that's up. That's weird. It worked. It worked last night. Yeah, we tested it out last night and it was working. So, uh, anyways, what's going on, Mars? How you doing, man? Good man, just working hard. Just got off the phone with Kung Fu Vampire. Just uh, man, trying to get it this year. I see, I see. You're moving and shaking. I, I, I lined you up for Wicked 101, and then I was like, oh shit, he's on this show and that show, and like, holy shit, he's on a whole fucking press tour. I had no man, idea. Well, yeah, you know what? I uh, I think I owe it to my fans. I, I spent a lot of time not doing stuff, and um, I think this year. You know, I, I need to, to step up not only my music, but my promotion and get people to know me a little bit better from everybody's listeners, you know what I mean? So I'm trying to uh, definitely campaign. Well, you, you're doing a good job because, like I said, you've been popping up on my feed left and right. Uh, you know, That's kind of the plan, man. Yeah, I mean, you got to stab people's brains. And, uh, that's, I mean, that, there's an art to that, not just in, uh, not just in social media, but... You know, make a good music. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's really that's really the first step is make a good music. Um, yeah, man, it's definitely my my main focus right now is just making music. You know what I mean? And it's mostly just uh, it's good therapy. It's it's a good way to pass time. And you know, I learned a long time ago that if you want to make a paycheck for yourself, you gotta treat this music stuff like a real job. So that's kind of my my thought process going into everything. Right, right. Well, let's, uh, you know, you know, Wicked 101 is all about the history, right? Um, so let's, let's take it back, man. Let's talk about like Lil Mars coming up in the game and, uh, and, uh, you know, school these motherfuckers, man. It's Wicked 101. So, uh, let's start at the very beginning, man. Like what, what got you into rapping and, uh, who was some of your favorite, uh, inspirations growing up? Coming up? You know, when I first got into rap music, some of the first rap that I found was was the wicked shit, you know what I mean? I found X-Rated and Brother Lynch and ADR LaVey's group, Triple Six, and uh, 
Gangsta Nip and Esham and Insane Clown Posse and all that stuff growing up. So when my friends started rapping, we were all into the same kind of shit, you know what I'm saying? So um, it just came natural that when we did rap, we rapped, you know, about the same kind of shit, you know what I mean? So um, it's just crazy just naming off those names, knowing these people now, you know what I mean? It's 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 came full circle and and I think our main focus back then when we were young and didn't really have a lot of like personal shit going on that was crazy we just tried to push our our content you know like what's grosser than gross kind of game you know what I mean we were trying to say the craziest shit in the world and um I think over the years it, it became where the crazy shit that we talked about it reflects kind of the lifestyle that we live you know what I mean but that's kind of where I got my start just the the, the horrorcore scene really you know when, when I first came out you know when we first started pressing tapes up there was only a couple of us there was like KGP there was House of Crazies there was L.U. Cypher there was Bedlam and then uh and then House of Crazies turned into the other House of Crazies and then um half breed and it was just uh, really us you know what I mean there wasn't a lot of uh, rappers on the scene at the time and um it wasn't as easy so to I, do it it was yeah it was it was well we were all friends too I mean, we were just finding out about each other right. so the scene was really really small and then you had ICP and you had Brother Lynch and you had you know the people that was already there pioneering the stuff so uh it was just like the big guys and then the deep underground and so I've been around long enough to see this grow in from a small group of people doing it into a subculture and a, an entire genre of its own, you know what I mean? So it's, it's kind of cool to see the growth and to be a, a big advocate for uh, just the music and you know what I mean, the scene. Right, for sure, man. What, uh, when, when, uh, when did you start uh, spitting? Like what, what year did you start and um, uh, who was around at the time that like help that kind of come to fruition you know was there was it you making all the beats and shit or what was was there a group of, uh, a team like i want, I want to well, know back, the beats. back then man so i got my start because of jay riz his brother is g-dub or gary you know what i mean and g-dub ran two sick productions and he was just making music out of his bedroom making beats and recording all the local rap artists you know what i mean for big break which is a neighborhood in Oakley, California, which is next door to Antioch, you know what I mean? And um, and Jay riz because his brother was recording everybody, he's like, I could do this shit. And then he started rapping with his brother, making crazy shit, and he started Mindless Ignorance Records, which ended up turning into Mad Insanity Records that kept the MIR acronym. And um, he showed me his music, and I was like, oh shit, okay, okay, you know what I mean? And then I wrote some shit, and, um, we ended up getting like old four track recordings uh, made into basement tapes, which was Sid's eventually. And um, he did uh, Fuck Life and The Arrival and Sold Out. And it was like the between where uh, four track tapes were becoming where you could record and make CDRs. It was like right in that transition, you know what I mean? And then G Dub was making all of our beats for us. So, uh, you know, when we were just our first. Our first stuff we ended up putting out, and then locally we kind of got a buzz as just the people that made weird shit, you know what I mean? And it just kind of grew from there, and everybody either went their separate ways. I still hang out and talk to J Riz and G Dub all the time, and um, you know, it's just uh, I think I was the only one that really pursued it as a career, you know what I mean? Which is I'm probably not the smartest idea. Thinking back, I could have been a doctor or some shit, but right. Uh, <laughs> It just kind of grew from there, you know what I mean? Right. What was the What was the first release that you uh, that you, you put out? Sids was, you know. I, I think uh, I appeared on. Did I appear on Jay Riz's stuff? I think I was on um, his Fuck Life album. If not uh, on a song, at least the background. And then I put out Sids. What year and was then that? Once, huh? What year was that? Oh, that was like ninety seven, ninety eight. You know what I mean? It was a. Uh, it was real early in the game, you know what I mean? And then um, as the internet kind of caught on, there was a website called uh, Trigger's Home of Acid Rap where he was starting to cover 
us before there was anything, you know, before there was a horrorcore.com, before there was a serialkillers.com, before there was splatter music, before there was any of that shit, you know what I mean? It was that. And it was like an Angel Fire page. And then other Angel Fire and whatever the fuck that shit used to be called, GeoCities and shit, they started like making their own pages about us and Isham and House of Crazies and ICP and everybody. And, um, and then like, it just kind of exploded. Once ICP kind of exploded and um, the whole Juggalo culture kind of caught on, which was around around that time, you know what I mean? More and more kids were like, oh shit, I could do this, you know what I mean? All I have to do is talk all kinds of silly shit and weird shit and crazy shit. And then everybody became a horrorcore rapper, you know what I mean? And then uh, it just kind of exploded. It became a thing, you know what I mean? And uh, it, 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 it kind of helped, you know what I mean? It was, it was a, a thing. There. Yep. Okay, you kind of you kind of broke up there. You said you were you were saying. Shit, is this my, my I'm on my Wi-Fi and all that? But, uh, no, it, it was uh, it was pretty momentary. It just kind of cut out for a second. Okay, yeah, but like I said, like because of of the the whole Juggalo movement and scene becoming to develop, you know what I mean? When the word Juggalo was made was a thing, you know what I mean? It became a big thing where everybody was into not only it was like the scene was a fan of everybody and it kind of helped all the smaller groups kind of have a bigger audience to, to market to and to cater to and to get to know you know what i mean so it was cool to see it grow right what um so what came after that with, with, I, in terms of uh you, you know you said your first album was sids um what, what came after that? Like, what was the response like, you know, when you, uh, you, you said, you said they were just like, that was the crazy motherfuckers, but, but like, was it, like, did it move a lot of units or was it just, you know, you know, um, or, like, there was these underground stores like Hot Hits and, uh, something like Second Wind CDs out of Cincinnati or something like that. They bought stuff from us all the time. But like, you, you know, at first it wasn't a, a cup, it was only like a couple of hundred tapes at once but like we would actually sit there and print out the labels for because these were cassettes you know what i mean like right it was it was where we were uh we're cutting out the cassette covers and tapes and shit and we had to make them in like an assembly line and send them so you know when you're like 18 years old and you sell 100 tapes at 10 dollars each you think you're fucking doing it you know what I mean? right so right um that's how it started and the response kind of grew from there and where me and j Riz were the only ones out of all of our friends to stick with it so uh man insanity records was always our thing you know what i mean and it still is but um once our friends went on to college or drugs or girls or whatever they did um me and j Riz were like okay well let's make man insanity this group you know what i mean and then we we uh, put out the Slaughterhouse tape and uh, the, I think a, a, a cassette called Rise the Power, which had Half Breed on it on, on uh, the Slaughterhouse tape. When um, when it, when Virus Independent was a big thing, so was Mad Insanity. So it was like the big three or four was like L.U. Saifa, Mad Insanity, uh, Half Breed, and Bedlam. You know what I mean? And uh, so we were just all trying to make music together. You know what I mean? And keep it moving. You know what I mean? So. Uh, once the Slaughterhouse tape came out with Halfbreed and we combined them kind of like forces almost, then shit really started exploding, you know what I mean? We ended up selling like those cassette singles and the O-Cars, we ended up selling like 3,000 of those right away and then we didn't know what the fuck to do with ourselves, you know what I mean? It was, you know what I mean? Even though I think it was only like, we're selling them for like five bucks times a couple thousand, it was, you know, for a young kid to have at the time, you know what I mean? Shit adds up. That yeah, was pretty nice, you know what I mean. And eventually, uh, I think we start we started recording an album, and then um, I don't know what happened, man. You know what I mean? I, the life picked up right away for me. You know what I mean? I had I had babies. You know what I mean? Coming automatic all of a sudden. You know what I mean? And then you know bad relationships and J Riz joined the army and was on drugs and like you know what I mean? Like it was like where our music 
priorities got mixed up, but I always try to make it work, you know what I mean? Because of the initial couple thousands of CDs, I was like, well, I could actually make a living off of this shit. And, right. You know what I mean? And I would say around 2005-ish is when shit really popped off and I could actually start making a living off of music and and um, just kind of kind of learn how to how to do marketing and stuff, you know what I mean? Yeah, so I mean, it's it's been a long time, man, and I mean, you've been around so long. I mean, it's just mind blowing to think that anybody that's watching this hasn't heard your name before, you know. But if they if they hadn't heard your name before, what what piece of work would you point them to? Like, this is what you should this this should be your introduction to Mars. Like, what track or video or uh, album would you would you say this is what you should check out first you know i was just i was just talking to somebody recently and we were talking about how long i've been doing this for and then when i thought my cap was was like when i put out schoolhouse glock and mars attacks and, and stuff like that and then if you look at like my itunes charting or my itunes like top songs played or spotify top songs the songs that I made this year have outsold all the stuff that I've done prior, which is fucking crazy because there's no physical CDs of a lot of stuff. You know what I mean? But if you look at like um, my song Medication that came out, uh, I think that came out what? August, September, something like that. Um, that's surpassed everything that I've done already. You know what I mean? And I think that's a good representation of where to start if you haven't heard my music. It's me uh, getting comfortable with myself as a musician and as a as just as a person, and you know what I mean, and having fun again. You know what I mean. And, and all this right now is just all been about me having fun. So anything that I put out this year, I would say start out and check out medication, and that's me at my best. You know what I mean. And then after that, I, I dropped uh, some stuff with Bad Mind on Bad Insanity. Uh, called It Gets Deep, but the Murder EP right now is this fucking, you know what I mean, I recorded that in a week with my homie Bane, and um, the the numbers on that have already surpassed medication, so I would say check out medication and check out uh, the Murder EP, because that is probably me at my best and most comfortable. Well, while we're, while we're on the subject of uh, your current projects, um, I mean, I'm just going through this list you gave me of, of all the shit that has dropped. And, Man, I mean, so much, right? Yeah, I mean, you've got, uh, what is it, seven singles this year that you've dropped? Yeah, you know, and it was never like a plan either to do any of that. It was just me having fun and wanting people to hear it, you know, so. Like, here's a single, I, you get a single, you get a single, you get a single. Yeah, exactly. You know, you know it, it's, it's been so cool because, like, say like my new album coming out next month is called Locked Up Abroad and I waited for uh, my Kung Fu Vampire has also been doing a lot of stuff he's on tour right now on the Kung Don tour and um, I've been trying to get him to do a song for it so I kept pushing the dates back you know what I mean but as I pushed those back I would release like two singles you know what I mean because in that time I was just like well they need something this month so I would, I would drop another one and then somebody else would be like oh shit that shit's dope we should use one of my beats and they give me a beat and I was like well if you mix it I'll put it out next and then I'll be like oh shit this one's tight so I'll put that one out you know what I mean and then everything's been going so well and fitting together so well and and I have this amazing deal with Matt Insanity and Empire Distribution that it allows me the freedom to put out things whenever I want and pick my release dates and pick my percentages and all that stuff so it's beautiful man and I um it's just, I, I don't even know what next year is going to look like now that I'm in this groove. I, I, just, I just don't want to stop, you know what I mean? I mean, I feel you, man, because, you know, it's one thing when you're, uh, when you're, I mean, I, just speaking as an artist myself, man, you, you, you know, the best shit comes out when you're having fun with it. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you're not having fun with it, the shit's not going to come out fresh, you know? It's, it's going to be, it's going to feel forced and it's not going to... It's not gonna have the same potential that uh, is if you're just going in there having fun, write what you feel. You know what I mean? So uh, that's awesome that you're on a roll, man. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta run with that as as long as you can. 
I, I think too these days I want to give the fans what they want so I'm listening to the responses and I'm reading the comments and I am googling myself or reading the shit or I forget there's a name for that the uh, you know what I mean where you you go look at your own shit on people's shit and I pay attention and I, I, I look at the uh, the way things chart and the, and the numbers they do on the um, the streaming uh, services and stuff like that, and I'd be like, okay, they ain't really fucking with this one, but they're really fucking with this one, so let's give them more like this, you know what I mean? And my core audience is horrorcore, you know what I mean? And for I think for some time, I try to like water my stuff down and talk about normal stuff, and that's cool, and I still do, but my biggest response is for the weird fucking murder shit, you know what I mean? And, and I think that's why I'm able to throw so much shit out there and see what sticks and then the next one I do based off of my my research and myself and my numbers I try to cater towards what the fans want you know what I mean and, and I think that's mostly important these days is to listen to your fans and you know what I mean even the haters you gotta listen to the haters like, this shit fucking sucks you know right. what I mean and I'm like damn you're right it does why the fuck did I put that out you know what I mean you gotta, and then, um, you gotta take that stuff with a grain of salt, though, man. Because uh, yeah, if it's good, they'll still say you suck. Exactly. And the, the other the other side of it is like, you know, if you if you're if you're constantly trying to tweak what you're doing and, and adjust for what everybody else wants, you know, at some point it's like I think Tech Nine said it best. You know, I make my music for my motherfucking self. You know, and I think I you, think I mean I I agree with that because you know honestly, I, and I tell people all the time to like, you know. What do you get out of music? What do you, what gives you, you like the 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 satisfaction of making music? And I always tell them like honestly, I like getting the mix back and going and sitting in my car and playing that shit a million fucking times and smoking weed and being like yeah, that's what I did that shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm super happy with just that and the fact that other people even give it a chance or listen to it or buy it or stream it or go buy a t-shirt or go to a show that's just like such a blessing on top of just that you know what i mean and that's really why i do it but um if you're gonna expect people to support you with their hard-earned money you know what i mean it's got to be a little bit of both i think right for sure man um so let me just go down these notes real quick we got uh we talked about the medication single um, you said that was uh, produced by West Side Rail. Um, West Side Rail did medication. He's done a lot of stuff for Strange Music, and he reached out to me and he's like, "Yo, you know, pick a beat." So I went to the folder, but I think the first song I heard, or the first beat that I heard, I was like, "Yep, that's the one." And I didn't really even pay attention to the other ones. I just told him I wanted that one. And then um, a friend from high school offered to have his boy mix it and i was like fuck it yeah let's do it you know what i mean i don't have to pay for it like let's let's give this kid a chance and this dude fucking destroyed it like the beat is amazing the song is cool but this dude his name is pop jensen and he's out of uh fresno california he works in a studio called the green room he mixed that in a night and he really, really made the song, man. And like all those little, little tweaks and all those little noises and all the things he did to the song really made it, man. And I'm really excited to go to Fresno and work with that guy on the whole project. Uh, he's got me excited about stuff. You know what I mean? So check out Medication and listen to it with headphones, man. And you'll hear all kinds of weird little shit in there. It's it's crazy, man. You, you say that too, because like I, I've recently found a. a producer that's got me excited too and um he's like he's like my little uh my little secret like i won't i won't tell him about tell tell anybody about him yet you know it's like i want to get our record done that i'm working on first and then i'll be like this is my boy you know what i'm saying like what it because that dude is just killing it you know but um, yeah i mean i wish i could keep pop jensen a secret but i think <laughs> part of the deal was that i had to tell everybody how amazing he was right <laughs> you know what i mean oh I, we're, we're gonna do that it's just uh, you know we gotta get our album done first you know what i'm saying exactly but anyways um that's dope though um so you dropped that um you got the uh you dropped the other single on friday the 13th uh it gets deep uh, what can you tell us about that one real quick? It gets deep. Um, that one was cool because 
um, Bad Mind, I think I was out to, to dinner or something like that not out in LA. And I just, you know how you're at the stop sign and you check your phone when you're not supposed to? Right. I think I checked my email and uh, just a random Bad Mind beat popped up. And he said, check this shit out. And I, I clicked on it and it was in the car and it played over the speakers and it was dope as fuck. You know what I mean? I was like, see, he knows what kind of shit I like. He knows exactly how to get me excited about a song. And um, I was like, dude, I need that. I need that right now. And I went home, smoked some weed, recorded it. And like until like four o'clock in the morning and I went to bed and when I woke up, he had already mixed it when I was waking up, you know what I mean? And I was like, oh shit. Like, I didn't know, you know what I mean? I wish I had somebody who could do that every time. And um, that's all he does. I, 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 I hit he, up he Empire. He doesn't do anything else. So yeah, yeah right? See, I, I need to learn how to do my, my own shit so I could just be nonstop. I'd probably not get anything else done, but I, I gave it to Empire and it's getting up there, man. People are feeling it. For, for some of these singles, I like to just surprise people because I know, you know, like I dropped the Murder EP and then I have a, a, a single coming out a couple times this month and I don't promote them because I want people to be like, oh shit, you know what I mean? Right. And some sometimes it works in that benefit as it, for the excitement of others to to see that, you know what I mean? I, I just have shit popping off all the time. They never know when I'm gonna drop something. So I think uh, I like I like giving people that excitement that I got when I wake up and heard the song. I mean, that was one of those things. And I gave it to him on Friday the 13th. Because obviously in horrorcore, we have Halloween, we have Friday the 13th, and Easter if you're a fucking weirdo. Right. I mean, you know, dress up as the Easter Bunny and go and murder people. I don't know. There's that, probably that a song be. in that somewhere. <laughs> yeah, right? I, has anybody done that yet? Uh, I don't know. Maybe we should. I don't know. There you go. Boom. It's genius right there. It, it is. It is. I mean, it would be a cool cover at the very least, you know? Yeah, I'm all about the cool covers. I'll do a song just because I want the cover to look like that. Right. So, um, what would the, what would the Easter eggs be? They'd probably be like little eyeballs or something. I don't know. Baby heads. Baby heads. You know what I mean? Yeah. Baby so, head. Something Tits. Like that. There's something there, <laughs> man. I'm telling you. All right. Yeah. Well, let's move on, man. Um, so looking at my notes here, you're coming out with an album um, very soon uh, with Danny Diablo. What, what can you tell us about that? Yeah. Uh, so Danny Diablo, back a couple years back, he had asked me. I wasn't really familiar with like the the New York hardcore scene, you know. But I'm real good friends with Kevin Gill, and I know he was. And um, uh, Danny Diablo had asked me over Twitter or something like that if I would be on his album and I looked and he was like verified and then he had hella followers and I was like well fuck yeah you know and I told him I would and then I flew to Wisconsin and I probably lagged on doing his verse you know like a dickhead because you know like I was probably doing other shit or just being a fucking lazy ass you know what I mean and then uh, I told the DRP when I at Force 5 Records that this dude asked me he's like what you need to do that like he's fucking huge you know Everybody in the world listens to that guy in some way. He has a million different projects. You need to do it. So I was like, all right, and I did it. And they ended up, they, they knew each other, and they went on tour and stuff. So Danny um, ended up going on tour with me. And we ended up doing going out to Brooklyn and uh, New Jersey and New York and shooting some videos with him. And I did uh, Diablo Fest, which is a uh, New York hardcore festival. You know what I mean? And... Uh, I did that, and we just became friends. He's super fucking funny. He's cool. He's big and scary looking. He has a crazy fucking voice. And I thought it would be interesting if we did an album. So we bring it to Force 5, and we both flew out to Wisconsin and recorded at Mad Science Audio Labs with uh, Kyle Kapowski and the DRP. And we all kind of worked on it together. And but Danny Diablo supplied the beats for it, so it's really New York shit, you know what I mean? It's kind of out of my element, and he has such a different style than me that it's just it's just crazy to hear how I adapt to it, you know what I mean? And then we have people like Vinny Paz and Slain and Gmo Ski and Lex the Hexmaster. We got uh, Gorilla Voltage. We got the ROC on it. We Damn. got um, 
West Nile from out there, you know what I mean? Uh, the DRP. We got a bunch of people on it, man, and I never thought I would be rapping with people like Slain. I you know I know Slain, but I just never imagined me on a song with them. And when I got that song, it was just amazing, you know what I mean? It was, it was cool to have that challenge of adapting to other people's styles, you know what I mean? And, uh, it's real cool. It's coming out uh, at the end of November through Force 5 Records. Uh, end of November, so this year, very soon. Yeah, I'll have two albums coming out the same month. Jesus Christ, I'm really trying man. to step it up now, you know what I mean? Why don't you space them out, man? <laughs> I, can people even keep up with you? I'm trying to have all this shit on one check. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Got to. I feel you. Um, Christmas is coming. Right. I need to buy. I need to buy a bunch of baby stuff. Oh Jesus! How many babies you got? I got. Um, I got three. Three kids. You know, I got uh, my oldest daughter. She's 21. Uh, she has a baby. You know what I mean? My my youngest daughter. She's six. 23. You just you just froze up again. Uh, you said your oldest daughter is uh, 21, and then she'll be 21. Um, my youngest daughter's 16. My son's 12. Well, my oldest daughter, she has a two-year-old boy. You know what I mean? So I'm a grandfather. Can you believe that? And uh, That's great. my girlfriend's 23. You know what I mean? I got a lot of kids to buy shit for. Dear God. That's 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 one thing that I haven't uh, I haven't. My, my, my child is this music shit, so... Yeah, uh, don't have babies. Yeah. <laughs> don't do it. I'm trying try not to. Um, God you're, you're in a good position because you can do whatever you want and fuck up. Right. And there's, like, really nobody you're hurting except for you. You know what I mean? Right. I envy those days. Yeah. All right, well, moving on. Uh, so you got a thousand albums coming out this year. Um, <laughs> okay, so... Uh, what's this, um, I see this note about you, uh, helping out with the homeless community. Can you talk about that a little bit? Matter of fact, I think I, yeah, got, you know, I, think I got a picture of that. Yeah, so, um, a couple years ago, I had, uh, linked up my friend, with my friend Patty O'Brien, and we just decided to go and, you know, let me, let me start like this. So, I get a lot of free stuff, just from social media, you know what I mean? Like whether it be clothes or if say if I have a show or a music video shoot, I'll have companies like uh, Kinder's Barbecue or um, Little J's in Pittsburgh, California, they'll cater my shows, you know what I mean, for free. And all they really want is is me to plug them or let people know about them. And, you know, but when you're at a show, you're getting paid a lot of money. So it's not like I can't buy my own fucking sandwiches, you know what I mean? So I thought it would be a better thing to do to use that to feed people who actually need it. So me and Patty O'Brien, we went out together and um, where I was born is Antioch, California. And in this county is called Contra Costa County. And in the Bay Area, Contra Costa County is allotted a certain amount of money per city to, to have services and help for the, the community, you know what I mean, like programs and especially for the, the homeless community and, and women's shelters and you know, rehab programs and stuff like that. And in my city has the highest number of the homeless population by 60% than any other city in the county. But the money is split up evenly. So a rich neighborhood or a rich city would have the same amount as, as my city, which is all fucked up, you know what I mean? So um, there's not a lot of help out there. So we kind of took it upon ourselves to gather personal hygiene items with our friends, and like my boy Swizz. Um, He's helped out, you know, uh, people will send items to the local Walmart from all over the country to help out, like blankets and hygiene products and um, flashlights and blankets, and people will donate jackets and all that stuff, and we go out there and we talk to the people and get to know them, and we know them as, we know people with names and faces, and we know their story, and we know that most of the people out there actually have jobs, and people think they're they're drug addicts down there and you know a lot of people are just fell on hard times there's people there's a guy out there that um you know he was taking care of his father and his father had this house you know and he was paying his mortgage based off of social security and his son was 
quit his job to take care of his, his father. And when his father passed away, the social security check stopped. And this guy had a hard time looking for a new job once his job was over taking care of his father. And he ended up homeless down there. And people would look at him and think because he had, maybe he hasn't showered or he hasn't washed his clothes for a little bit that he's some drug addict that breaks into shit. You know what I mean? And it's just, it's just somebody who fell in hard times. And a lot of people are out there like that, you know? So it's, it's cool to hear people's stories and look at them as a human being and be able to help out, you know what I mean? And there's there's people that go downtown Antioch and they uh they give lunch and and, and, and breakfast and there's churches that help out, you know, but sometimes there's not enough and there's a lot of people to, to feed out there and I go down there and uh, and I help out using the resources that I obtain through music, which is kinda cool. And then um I just did it just to do it, you know what I mean? Like I actually met my girlfriend that way, you know, um she messaged me one day to thank me that I had fed one of her family members down there and we started talking and then she started helping and I think the goal now is between the both of us is to start a homeless shelter in the county specifically Antioch and Pittsburgh California where I'm from where we could have services and counseling and a place to take a shower and a place to check your mail and where people could donate and well, it's a safe place for people to go get help if they need it. You know, and a lot of these people don't have cell phones and they don't have a computer or they can't look up these places and and find the help that they need. You know what I mean? There is there there's not a lot of resources for them that start just at that point, you know what I mean? I wanna be able to have a computer and and access the stuff like that for people who are really looking to help themselves. And there is some people down there that just do drugs and don't want the help, just want to live off the grid. You know what I mean? And they're still human beings, and if they're hungry, they gotta get fed. They gotta, they need the basic necessities of anybody else. And uh, it wasn't until maybe a year or two into it where, like, the media picked up on it. That is weird because I'm a horrorcore rapper and I make songs about murder and shit and I wear a mask, but I'm down you know, using stuff that I obtained through this weird ass music to help people. And I think it's a crazy story that they like to tell. And, you know, because of that also it allowed many more people to donate and volunteer time and stuff like that. So it's real cool, man. Uh, I'm glad to see like, you know, there's, there's artists like, um, like Project Born and people out in Flint that help bring water to their community and stuff. So it's cool to see other artists and, and Twisted having the um, the turkey drives and stuff like that. People in our genre aren't really expected to do shit like that and it's cool to see how far it's, it, it could spread with just people like us, you know what I mean? Just like you and me, you know what I mean? And I think anybody can do it. And I think if anybody is in the Bay Area and wants to donate some time or whatever, you know, or some items or send some stuff to the local Walmart to pick up from wherever they're at, you know, I'm more than welcome to it and I really appreciate it and the people down there really do too, so where, get at me. Where, what, what should they do if they do want to get involved and help you out? Um, I mean, just, just uh, there, if you got social media, message me. I check all my messages, you know what I mean? I don't leave nobody on red unless you're being a fucking weirdo, you know what I mean? Right. Uh, just message me, get at me, let me know how you want to help and I'll let you know the, the easiest way to to help me, you know what I mean, with what you got, you know what I mean, and it's always appreciated, or if you are looking to do the same thing in your community, I can pretty much guide you in that direction and show you how to get started doing with what I do for the people of your city. That's awesome, man. Um, that, deserves, that deserves some air horns, man. Thank you for that. That's, that's really dope. Um, cool, cool, man. I appreciate that. Yeah, um, you know, it's cool too, like you said, with Twisted doing the uh, the, the free show every year for um, for Twistmas, uh, uh, doing the food drive. You know, um, I mean, it's it, it, you know, people. Some people don't understand that uh, just because we love music about murdering people doesn't doesn't necessarily mean we're bad people. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I, I don't know. It's just it's it's funny, but uh, it's hard to explain that to people. You know yeah, what I mean? no, for sure. For sure. Like most of my family, until I was like 20 something, thought I was a Satan worshiper because I make music like this. Right. When I finally told him I was, it was really weird. <laughs> yeah, I bet. <laughs> so, 
so uh so what else is going on man you got this um you've been promoting this uh this clothing brand cookies what is that all about so um um so i i dedicate a lot of time to to reaching out and getting followers and 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 reaching out to people to to follow me because not only do i need a bigger pool of people to always promote to and and people to find a way to, to learn about all the new stuff that I got going out. So my, my my social media numbers are pretty high, you know what I mean? And because of that, I was able to develop a, a marketing plan, not only for myself, but for other companies to use my market pool as their own, you know what I mean? So like companies like, like Cookies, you know what I mean? They, they send me clothes all the time just to wear photo shoots. And lately I've been, they've been sending a lot of stuff. So. Um, if you look at all the flyers or all my photos and stuff like that, it's all cookies, you know what I mean? But uh, one of the original companies to do it was Rebel 8. You know, Rebel 8 is a company that I I love. I used to just buy their shit all the time. Same with cookies, though, you know, which is real cool. It's really popular out here in the Bay Area. And I think you can find it in Zoomies and Tillies and stuff like that. But um, uh, it got to be to where a lot of my favorite clothing companies that I would buy with the money I earned now send me clothing just to wear at shows or in photos or in magazines or when I do like a TV appearance or or meet and greet or whatever you know what I mean just to, even just for social media and um, it helps them out you know and some companies you know like I wish I could show you I have a giant fucking pile of just different clothing brands and packaging that send me stuff all the time and some people pay me to do it you know what I mean so it's another source of income and not just clothes though, like um, like this knife company. This knife company sent me all kinds of shit. Uh, I get um, CBD companies. I get uh, Kangol hats. Uh, so how, so how, do, how does one get on that bandwagon where people are just fucking sending you shit? Is it just because the social media numbers or like what? What do you what do you do? Well, it's 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 it's, it's that is the appeal, I guess. But. Um, it's just, you know, sometimes they approach you and sometimes you approach them. And over the years, I've developed all these relationships with people that are um, marketing. You know, I used to work for like a lot of magazines and I used to work in the radio uh, industry and stuff like that behind the scenes. And you get to know people and you get to know how people pitch you and you get to develop your own pitch to people. And, you know, like you hear all the time, uh, 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 social media influencer, you know what I mean? And, and I was doing that for years before there was a word for it. I didn't know that, you know, I was a brand influencer or whatever like that. And even at a small scale like me, that companies pay big money to have access to what they think is leads. And leads are your following, you know what I mean? So uh, if you have a big pool of followers, you can pitch a company and be like, hey, I really like your fucking pants over here. You know, I will wear this in all my social media if you send me some pants and they're like fuck yeah you know let's do that and they'll send you some pants and some companies that i may not be familiar with will be like yo you know so i like what you got going on it's kind of fucking weird but i would really appreciate if you wore this hoodie that i got coming out i'll give you 300 bucks you know what i mean i'm just like fuck yeah and the hoodie's dope you know what i mean right so which is cool too is that i buy a lot of clothes and hats and shoes and shit anyways so um the money that these companies give me, I'll end up. I, I bought a cookie shirt the other day. You know what I mean? I don't know. My girl's like, you get that for free. Just ask for it. And I'm like, well, I want it now. You know? So I end up buying clothes with the money people get me to wear their clothes. You know what I mean? It's, it's real cool. Um, at one point, I think, uh, what's the company called? Uh, fuck, do I have one in here? Uh, PF Flyer would send me every shoe that I want to match any outfit. You know what I mean? Wow. And they didn't pay me, but I, I would have bought shoes anyway. So, right. You know what I mean? So I, I think it's all in the pitch, man. If you got something to offer people, um, people will send you shit. I, I got a lifetime supply of rolling papers from a company in Paris. Well, I got some right here. It's called Youth Papers. You know what I mean? Youth from Paris. You know what I mean? Go get them. Uh, they send me rolling papers and, and stuff like that. There's a company once that I opened the, the package that it had uh, weed cartridges in it. And I'm like, holy shit, 
what a time to live in, you know what I mean? Right. And, uh, Delivered to my door. So, yeah, right? Like, fucking, what a country. You know what I mean? It's fucking right. crazy, man. But uh, I think, and I, a lot of the younger artists that ask me for advice, I always tell them, build your numbers up, even, no matter what. You know what I mean? Because you, you're going to need uh, to market to your people. You're going to need to develop a relationship with your fans. And you could be making a lucrative income before your music does while you're build, building your music, you know what I mean? There was times where I didn't put out albums and I was still getting shit for free and getting checks from companies just to put their stuff, uh, their stuff on social media, you know what I mean? So to have it all kind of at the same time, it's, it's pretty cool, you know what I mean? It's, it's like, it's just, it's, just, it's just fucking weird, it's crazy, you know what I mean? But I learned a lot of it from the skateboard industry, you know what I mean? Uh, there's there's, there's uh, professional skateboarders that I know that um, they would get paid every time a, a skateboard company's t-shirt logo was uh, published in a magazine. If if they did a trick and their board was like, and it takes a picture like this, and you could see the logo on the board, they would get paid for that, you know what I mean? Right. And they'd get paid to wear it all the time, you know? And I kind of learned that game from my friends who do that, you know what I mean? And, it kind of it kind of works for everything. To be honest, my girl, you know, she watches these videos of, of girls who do their makeup and shit like that, and they get free makeup and they get paid to put on makeup from these companies. It's 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 easy to do once you have a big following. But it's, you know what I mean? You gotta have something to offer these people, and they'll definitely make it worth your while. Right. Has there been any companies that you're like, hell no, nah, I I ain't representing you, motherfuckers. <laughs> um. Sometimes, sometimes I'm just like, why the fuck would anybody give a fuck about that for me? You know what I mean? But uh, there's been times where people have, they're like, okay, I need, like, this, this is a place in, in another country. There's like, Mars, I want you to wear my hat forward with my logo, but I need you to grow a beard and wear a mask. And I was like, and, 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 and it straightens your hair. And I was like, bro, just fucking send me the fucking hat. What the you know fuck what I mean? are you talking like, about, bro? Huh? I, I forget the name of the company, man, but like, I was like, why do you want me to grow a beard if I'm gonna wear a mask over it? You know what I mean? And I don't really wear the mask with my hat for it. It looks funny. And I was like, I don't do all that shit. They offered me a pretty decent amount of money, too. And I, and I was just like, yeah, that's, you're doing too much, man. You know what I mean? I look right. stupid with a beard. I'm gonna look like somebody's dad. Yeah. Why, why do I need to have a beard? Why can't I just yeah, it's fucking weird. be me and wear that? Yeah, that's amazing. It makes me feel like they have some. They pictured me naked with a beard or something at one point. <laughs> right. Like, what the fuck? All right, well, look, man, I got um, I got a bunch of questions uh, from from uh, people that, that got sent in, but uh, everything got fucked up all of a sudden. Mars. Yeah. Here's a question for you. I got, while I'm, while I'm, while I'm fixing this. Uh, this came in from my homie Josh Philly. He was a big fan. Um, he, uh, he had a question about an unreleased collab with MC Hammer, um, that never got released. Could you, could you speak on that? Well, you know, back in, what was this? Back when I was in fifth or sixth grade, I don't remember exactly. My mom was one of his backup dancers. So we used to eat breakfast at his house all the time in Oakland. You know what I mean? He would send a helicopter over to drop us off cereal. Sometimes we would just take it back to his house and eat and stuff. You know what I mean? And um, my mom ended up sleeping with him, so it kind of got me a good in. You know what I mean? Whoa, 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 so, whoa, whoa, wait, wait. Your mom slept with MC Hammer? Well, not her, his brother, uh, MC Screwdriver. But um, it still got me a good in, or he got a good in. I'm not sure who got the better deal there, but, um, so later down the road, I was in Tracy, California, where he lives now, and I ran into him. Am I on the screen now? All right. Yeah, you but, are. Um, yeah. Sorry about that. And I was like, yo, Hammer, please don't hurt him. Will you do a song with me? And he was like, you know what? Because you asked so nicely, and I fucked your mother with my brother. I'll do a song with you. So I, he took me to his house, and this time there was no breakfast, and he had a studio in his bathroom. You know what I mean? He used to have a bigger studio back when I first knew him, but he lost all of his money giving us all breakfast with heli helicopters and shit. And, you know, 
has never really... I think he dropped the mic in the toilet or something and it shorted out the, the, the boards and his computer and the files got lost. And um, so he pretty much fucked my mom for no reason. You know what I mean? Or maybe... Yeah. I don't like to talk about it. Let's, let's move on. Oh, I'm sorry, man. I, I didn't know. Um, no. What... Uh... What other collabs do you have that uh, never got released and uh, that people would be surprised to hear about? Or, uh... Shit, man. Um, I got songs with Mac Dre. I got songs with... I have a song with Mac Dre, Doobie the Sugar Wolf Pimp, Black Sea of RBL Posse, um, The Conscious Daughters, um... Fuck who else is in there? There's so many people was on one of the songs. It was back when I had it in at uh, 102.5 KSFM. Uh, we were doing a big West Coast song. Crazy Tunes, Rest in Peace. We were doing a remix of it. Um, fuck, I think uh, I sent the song to Brother Lynch, maybe. You know, I still have another song to him. So, maybe he dropped his mic in the bathroom. Toilet, too, I'm not sure. But, uh, so many people have songs of me that... I think I thought about it too much and I tried to just build onto it and do this crazy fucking dope thing and then it just got outdated where the hypey movement died and so that song, you know what I mean? So, uh, Spice One's on there, so the Roast is on there. I think I got a verse from Mr. Fab, maybe. Uh, I don't know, Smig Dirty and I Rock are on it. I think Turf Talk was on it. There's, I have so much shit out there, you know what I mean? But, um,. No use to cry over spilled milk or unreleased tracks in this case. Why Why would a lot of those not get released? Were they just, uh, was there like a political reason or, I mean, you know, I've No, not people. really. You know, um, one of the reasons why I think, uh, when I, at one point I had a studio that I, that we all kind of, um, we all kind of like threw in equipment. It was like, this guy, this producer named Ahmed Dance, he's a rapper too. I think he's a Christian, um, conscious rapper. Um, so the Roaster, which is a heavy hitter from um, Oakland, who uh, you gotta check in with him when you go to Oakland, or you might not be safe. You know what I mean, him. Um, Spice One bring me there. You know what I mean. Uh, we all kind of shared a studio space in in Hayward, California, actually, and. Um, the guy whose computer that was the main computer for everything, his his uh, hard drive at one point crashed and had so much dope shit. That is my shit. But um, shit from the Conscious Daughters, um, Special K, you know what I mean? The special one, the great, um, she uh, did a song right before that happened and she ended up passing away since then. And I had a lot, I had a great memories just recording that there, you know what I mean, that I kept forever with the song, unfortunately never made it to anything because a lot of that stuff was on the hard drive. I have rough mixes of me, Spice One, Zoda Rosta, um, Mike Marshall, who sung the hook on a, my Tyler Runner song, and I got file on it. There's like a lot of stuff that's unreleased that may end up on B-sides, you never know, you know what I mean, I kind of have to go through everything still, I think I'm trying to put that out in December, so we'll see what makes it. You mentioned, uh, real briefly though, you mentioned, uh, and by the way, we have, uh, the lines are open if you want to call in and a ask questions from Mars, 734-430-0549, uh, but you mentioned real briefly Tunnel Runners, um, wh what can you tell me about that project and, uh, how you got involved with that real quick? You know, um, that came, that's funny how that came about actually, um, I saw, I, like I'm friends with everybody, you know what I mean? And, yeah. and it's a real close-knit little scene that we got here amongst all the artists, you know what I mean? We, we all probably hate on each other some at some point, but when we see each other, we're like, hey, but we all still talk to each other, you know what I mean? But um, I, I slowly heard, like I think uh, Q Strange is like, yo, you know, Psychopathic just hit me up for this, uh, for this track, you know what I mean? I was like, oh, really? That's tight. And then, um, I think Jason Porter was like, oh, you know, they just hit me up with this track. And I started hearing like four or five motherfuckers and I was like, motherfucker, they never hit me up for no shit. You know, and I called them. Right. I'm like, what the fuck, man? How, how, how do I get on this shit? And they're like, oh, how'd you hear about this? I was like, I hear about fucking everything 
filters to me somehow. I know about everything, right. and I need to be on this shit. So um, they hit me up to do it. Well, actually, I hit them up to do it, and I hit up uh, a big producer here. Uh, shout out to Lee Black Productions. He's a big producer in San Francisco. He's done stuff with every legendary San Francisco producer. He's one of my favorite producers that I've ever worked with. And um, he made me a, a track for it. I got Mike Marshall to do the singles. I got five on it with the, the loonies. I hit up him for the hook. And I spent a decent amount of money. I think I spent just as amount of money to do the shit as they paid me, which is real, really weird, but it was cool. It was a good, it was a good boost at the time. And uh, when I turned it in, they're like, you're not supposed to have somebody else on your song. Like, this is all supposed to be you. Who the fuck is this guy? And I was like, that's fucking Mike Marshall from the Timex Social Club. And they're like, really? The guy who did uh, uh, Rumors? And I was like, yep. And I see him, the guy that's in the video, they're like, oh, fucking fresh. And then they didn't say anything about it ever again. You know what I mean? And um, that, that, just that song built a big relationship with everybody over there. You know what I mean? And it opened up a lot of doors for me to to expand my career from a, a local artist with the internet buzz to an artist that was able to tour the country based off of the success of one song and uh, the Billboard charting compilation, you know what I mean? And it, it helped me build a lot of relationships and I had a lot of fun and I've uh, met a lot of cool people from it, you know what I mean? For sure, man. What, um, another question I got from Josh was, uh, uh, he told me to have you tell some tour stories. What's, what's your best, uh, best couple of tour stories? Fuck, man. I don't know which ones I'm allowed to tell. Has it been seven years since? Uh, <laughs> is there a rule man. there? A seven year rule? Is that, is that a thing? Just the statute of limitations. Oh shit. Okay. I didn't know you that know, applied probably to the, tour some stories. Of the, some of the, the worst and the best tour stories involve a lot of people. And I don't know if I'm allowed to say it, you know what I mean? But on my behalf, uh, there was times there. I remember when I first started touring, I started touring with, with ICP and Psychopath and Blaze and, and ABK and, and Boondocks, you know what I mean? Those were my first tours, really, you know? So I think Boondocks hated me when we were on tour for some reason you know what i mean and i was just so excited to be on tour anyways that uh when i found out he hated me i just started wiling out anyways just to probably piss him off more because i was like oh, you don't like me well you're really not gonna like me now so um i would just get blacked out fucking stupid drunk and just just wild the fuck out on tour you know what i mean and annoy him even more that's actually how we became friends um he's like this this fucking guy has the balls in this fucking guy, right? But um, at one point I've had me, I, I got me and cousin Cletus a, a gun stuck in her face, and it actually to his face, but it was my fault. There's been times where, uh, you know what I mean? I, I think, actually, you know what? Beardstown, Illinois is one of my favorite tour stories. Uh, Beardstown, Illinois is in the middle of nowhere. The rumor has it that Abraham Lincoln, this is not like my MC Hammer story, but rumor has it that Abraham Lincoln contracted syphilis from Beardstown, Illinois, which I think I heard that story after the story I'm about to tell because I probably would have approached it a little differently, but um, uh, I was standing outside when the line was going into the show and it was a sold out giant show. Like there's a small city, but I think we were the only things happening in the city at the time. So everybody went, you know what I mean? Cause who the fuck goes to Beardstown, Illinois, right? So, um, Apparently, I was the biggest thing there with Psycho Jesus and, and Miss Kisa, I think, was on the tour. Uh, Two Face, Fetus, and some other dude. I forget his name now. But, um, sorry, Pete. His, his real name is Pete. But, anyways, uh, we went, oh, lyrical. So, we went um, to the city, and I was smoking a cigarette outside as the line was filing in. And this one pretty ass girl, man, she couldn't make it in. She couldn't make it in because she didn't have money for a ticket. And I was, she's like, hey, if I show you my tits, will you let me in? I was like, sure, you know? And she showed me her tits. And then I was about to tell the guy at the, the door and he's like, I already got you. And he let her in, right? But the the line was still out there. So people were like, well, I could drink with this. Sure, they put it back in my, their pocket and the girl started just coming and showing me the tits. And I was at the door like, yep, let her in, you know what I mean? <laughs> so at one point, 
and and I was taking this is when like uh, TwitPic was a thing for uh, Twitter, so I was posting my Twitter full of just tits. Like I seen so many tits that day. I have pictures with two mothers and their daughters all showing their titties. You know what I mean? And I was like, this place is the shit, right? Like. I, I, I was just like, I couldn't believe it. I would, I would just go pull somebody and like, dude, you got to see this shit. You, just stick with me, bro. I'm telling you. And um, the show was, was was off the fucking hook. You know what I mean? People were live. There was titties. People would just be like, excuse me, sir. I didn't show your my, my tits yet. And my friend did. So I was like, oh, well, well continue, you know, and <laughs> show their tits. I was like, oh, my God. I didn't want to see those ones. You know what I mean? Dear but God. I seen so many fucking titties that night. And that was just the start of it. So, um... So at one point we went to an after party, which was, this is the middle of nowhere. So there was all kinds of crazy drugs and weird shit that people did that I didn't know people actually did. Just running rapid. And like, we were at the after party and this one girl was like, look, check this out. You know, I know you're trying to fuck something tonight. You know what I mean? So I'm gonna help you out. And then she would start, she started collecting Pictures. Like, what do you think of her? Well, <laughs> I didn't want to be mean to him, you know what I mean? I was like, oh, she's nice, you know? Like, and she's like, all right, cool, she's coming with us. And I was like, what the fuck is about to happen? I had like 10 bitches sitting on the couch with me, you know what I mean? And needless to say, that was an interesting, interesting night, you know what I mean? I probably only made it to the first check or whatever, but still. No, um, no, no but wonder. When we went back. No wonder we you got so many hotel. kids. Huh? No wonder you got so many kids. Yeah, probably in Beerstown, Illinois, there's at least, I've been there, I, and I've been there like four times now, so who knows right. what's going on with it. But, I, didn't, uh, I didn't mean to cut you off, man, go ahead. No, I mean, that's, that's the end, of, there's a lot of tits, you know what I mean? That's a lot of tits I've seen at once, but over the years, I think it's probably accumulated somewhere, hopefully in an even number. Yeah. Do you have any other yeah. uh, quick tour stories before we move on? Uh, I don't know, man, like... I at one point, man, I was just so into alcohol that I would get fucked up. You know what I mean? And you know, once I grew into from an opener to where I was headlining my own tours, I was drinking like I was an opener, and would, and I've learned to master the art of being completely fucked up and having an amazing set. You know what I mean? And uh, just like. It's, it was, it, at times, you know what I mean? If you go on tour and then you and your girlfriend are, are fighting or uh, or if you guys break up right before, like it's, it sounds like you're about to have the time of your life, which you probably will, but it's, it can get dangerous out there, man. So like it's, so, so much crazy shit has happened, you know what I mean? Sometimes promoters don't pay up and you have to collect your money from them somehow. Sometimes, you know what I mean? Like, opening acts will fight each other and the show will get shut down and you have to make sure you get your money still and like there's this tour is just crazy all together but every tour has crazy tour stories there's only been like one or two tours where I'm just like this actually was a pretty nice successful no bullshit didn't throw up in the van ass tour you know what I mean there's been also a lot of like this is the no pussy getting tour you know what I mean part two sometimes it'd be like that it's, it's crazy man you know now that I'm settled down kind of you know what I mean like I think uh, I approach stuff like that with with a much bigger responsibility you know what I mean but when I was young and dumb and single that shit was off the hook so you know right. what I mean I think that's part of the reason I don't tour too much these days because I'm, I'm just now getting to the point where I don't drink really anymore you know what I mean I, I only smoke weed and you know, I have a girlfriend, I have kids that I kick it with, just like my homies, you know what I mean? And uh, I think uh, I'm a much more healthier mentally and, and physically than than I need to go on tour and fuck that up, you know what I mean? So I'm right. kind of, I'm kind of a recovering touring artist. At- right. Well, that's one way to look at it. Yeah, do you, for do you- sure. Do you uh, do you see yourself doing any tours anytime soon? Uh, even smaller scale stuff. You know, I've dedicated a lot of this year to just making music. You know what I mean? So I can build up a new show tape. You know what I mean? Full of just more variety and more songs that belong together on a set. And I'm having fun doing that. You know what I mean? But um, I think 
I would say in 2020, I'm gonna dedicate half the time to music and half the time to touring. But I like to double down on my releases. So I have a big release, tour, big release, tour, you know what I mean? And cause you know, a lot of people don't realize that when you go on tour, that's a lot of money too, you know what I mean? So like I miss being able to come back home and do whatever the fuck I want because I wowed the fuck out for a month, you know what I mean? And had fun and I got to meet my fans and I got to meet new people. It's like, you get paid to go on vacation and develop some type of drug habit. <laughs> it's amazing, you know what I mean? But I can't wait to do it again. Right. <laughs> uh, is there any chance of a Mad Insanity uh, uh, reunion in terms of uh, an album or a music? Or I know you re- um, recently did a, a track on uh, one of the recent Devil's Night compilations, right? You know, that was nice little thing. You know, I think, um, I think, you know, I talk to Jay Riz all the time, whether you're on social media. And the other day he called me out of the blue. I think I drunk call him. You know what I mean? Like, uh, it's very rare that I drink, but when I have like four beers, I'm just fucked up now for some reason. You know what I mean? So I'll end up drunk calling him because I know I don't really care if he gets mad or not. So I just call him. And um, we talked the other day, and he, he's actually. Has, his life is completely different, you know what I mean? And he still has has love for music, and I would love to do more stuff with him. And I, you know, we, we talk about it a lot, and I know he wants to do it. It's just uh, we live so far away from each other. I'm down in Southern California now, and he's uh, he lives in the same city as Kung Fu Vampire. And um, it's just it's just time and, and distance at the moment, you know what I mean? He don't really have his own way to record like I do, so. Right. But I would like to, you know what I mean? That's I, I've been best friends with him since seventh grade, so I would say it's gonna happen eventually. You know what I mean? For sure. Um, I, I always ask this to uh, a lot of my guests, man. So I want I want to kind of wrap it up with this. Uh, what you 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 you've done a lot of um, a lot of things with a lot of artists, but you've also done a lot of stuff on your own. But of everything you've done. Um, you know, all being said, is there an artist that you would just love to work with that you haven't had a chance to work with yet? You know, uh, it's weird because, like I said, Brother Lynch, I, I grew up on his music. He's been to my house before. He's looked in my refrigerator and grabbed beers without asking, you know what I mean? But we haven't done a song <laughs> with, with each other, you know what I mean? Right. And I think, I don't know why, you know what I mean? I think... I think we both like to drink at a certain point. He doesn't drink anymore, you know what I mean? So uh, maybe instead of just partying with each other when we see each other, that will maybe we'll get some stuff done, you know? But I would love to do some stuff with Esham. And for years, I've been trying to get me, Brother Lynch, Esham, and Gangsta Nip all in one song, you know what I mean? And I have the Gangsta Nip verse ready to go, but to convince Brother Lynch or Esham to do it, they'll always be like, yeah, I'll do it. Did he do his? Well, I'll do his. I'll do it when he does it. And then, and then Brother Lynch will be like, well, I'll do it when he does it. Then, so they're like, either putting me in the position to lie to one of them to get it done. And you know what I mean? But uh, that's that's what I've always wanted to do. And I think I, I want to do it for myself. But I think a lot of people would love to hear each album and Brother Lynch against them all in one song. Just because those, they have such a similar style. It's never happened before. And it would be dope, you know what I mean? I have such a big love for the scene, and I think the scene deserves it. Even if, it, even if I'm not on the song, because that, that's kind of like selfish to put myself on it, but if I make it happen, goddamn it, I'm gonna be on the song, but uh, I would love to see it happen, man, and I would love to just, uh, to work with, um, I like to work with singers. I have, I, I, I like to branch out and do different styles of music, but still imp- implement horrorcore into it, you know what I mean? Right, for sure. Hey, uh, do you do you remember the track that me and you were on together? Maybe which one? I think I, I think I come. Is it on iTunes? Uh, probably. Yeah, I. Every I'm, once I'm putting in you. I'm putting, I'm, putting, I'm, putting, I'm putting you on the spot because uh, I, I asked Kung Fu the same thing and he didn't remember either. Dude, I do some. There was a there was a point where I strictly paid my rent by doing songs with people. Right. And then I'll give the homies ones. 
And, and you know, if I look on my computer, I have a, a to-do list, and I have different pages. One's collabs, one's uh, the paid ones, one's free ones, free ones, and I'll always do the paid ones right away. And then my free ones, I have a giant list of people I just give them to. You know what I mean? Every once in a while, I'll be like, I don't have nothing to do. Let's get let's knock one of these out for the homies, you know? And but there was a, a year or two there where it was just every day where I would stack them up and I'm like, all right, we're gonna do it all today, you know what I mean? And then sometimes I look on iTunes and they'll pop up and I'll be like, I don't remember doing this one, you know what I mean? So there's so many out there. Well, it's when crazy. You, well, when you have a catalog that's a mile long, you know, like, I, you know, you know, I help out Twisted with uh, Ashtrays and Action Figures. And one time, it was, Jamie was like, Man, what song is this? And it was like, I was like, really, bro? Like, he didn't, he didn't know, he didn't know what the track was, cause you know he's made so much music, you know what I mean? Like, he's like, he couldn't remember what song it was or what album it was on, you know what I mean? And it's, it was it, one of my favorite songs, you know what I mean? So, it gets like that, man. It's sometimes, crazy. sometimes I'll go through, um, either at a studio, I'll go through my folder as as people, studio, cause I I work at like five, six different studios, and I have my own computer at home that I try not to as much on because I like to be in the environment you know what I mean but I'll go to people's Mars folders and I'll listen to shit like oh fuck how come we never did this, anything with this or like, like oh, when the who the fuck did I do this for or you know what I mean and yeah, sometimes you can just just dig and you'll find new shit that either didn't come out or you didn't finish or I, I have just probably as much stuff out as I do that's not finished too so it's crazy you know what I mean? Me too. You get lost in the sauce. Me too. Believe me. There's so, so much unreleased shit that it's kind of sad, actually. Yeah. But, I um, should just sell all that stuff to people who need it. Well, look, man, um, I'm kind of running out of uh, things to ask you. So is there any, uh, you got anything you want to uh, push or plug or any shout outs you want to give or anything you want to mention or say or do? Now is the time, sir. The shout out to the fam, you know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? Uh, there's a lot of stuff coming on this fucking Halloween season, you know what I mean? I will be with Gmo Ski at the, uh, the Night of the Living Dead show in Los Angeles with Necro and Twisted Insane on the on October 26th. I'll just be there kicking it with everybody, you know what I mean? You see me say what's up. Shout out to all the websites like Fable Lovers, Juggalo News, Horror Rap News. Um, everybody, man, who, who does something positive for the scene, you know what I mean? It's all about unity. It's all about family. You know what I mean? Fuck all the dumb shit. I love all my fans. I love all the people who don't even listen to me, but just support the scene, period. I dig it, man. Check out my new uh, EP. It's called The Murder EP. It's on everything right now, next month. And pre-ordering right now is my Locked Up Abroad scene coming out on Force 5 Records. Devils and Demons and with me and Danny Diablo is coming out in the next month. And I got some new shit coming out in two days. You know, it's called Always Be, produced by Ski Mask Beats. It's a new single coming out on October 18th, and I have something special coming out on October 31st for Halloween, too. So get it when it drops. Support your boy. You know what I mean? Listen to it, stream it, download it, steam, uh, steal it. I don't give a fuck, but just uh, as long as you like it, you know what I mean? Let me know, and I appreciate it. Thank you, everybody. For sure. Well, Mars, thank you for kicking it with me, man. I really, really appreciate it. And uh, tomorrow, tomorrow you're hanging out with Bones Dub on his show, right? The Bone Cat. That's right. He was sick on Tuesday. We're redoing it on Thursday. So uh, where, where can they watch that if they want to tune in for that? Go to the Bones Cast podcast. And uh, I think that's it, right? I think, uh, I think so. It's, up, it's on YouTube, right? I, I believe so. But uh, on social media, it's Bones A and B, and I think his show is at the bones cast podcast um check it out man you know what i mean it's a new show and it's from our boy bones from uh x murder boys m and e family you know what i mean i love y'all thank you guys for the opportunity for having me on no thank you man we appreciate it i got one more track to play from mars it's called whiskey and then we out this motherfucker man have a good night yes sir peace